Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Show Wizard. Going to do a Farming Simulator 17 Giants Editor tutorial. Uh, this is going to be a GE import of a placeable mod. Uh, I'm going to be working with the Hofbergman Reloaded add Bail Add-on uh, mod, placeable mod. Um, there is a version of this, I believe, from Modland.net, but very similar or exactly the same. I would probably say uh, mod structure. But uh, I prefer this one because the download from modland.net just gives you loads of errors and tries to spam you with viruses and whatever else. So this is a better download in my opinion. But I'm pretty sure the mods are exactly the same. So I think if by showing you how this one works, if you have the other one from modland.net, then the structure will be exactly the same or at least very similar. Um, and it will give you an idea of what needs to be done to get it working as a giant's editor import. So I'm going to work with a Goldcrest Valley edit. I've made a few changes in an area that I want to put a couple of these down. I'm not going to do all of them. I'm just going to work with the uh, square bale grass stack and the square bale straw stack. Um, but all of the others will be structured in a very similar fashion. Uh, might need to change a few power file names here and there. But uh, for the most part, I think this will give you a direction to go in uh, to help get it all working as a Giants Editor import, as I say. So what I want to do first of all though, because I don't want to bring over this entire folder into my map folder to then import it from here, I'm going to create a new folder with all of the parts appropriate for it and then it will just leave everything else behind because there's a lot of XMLs in here that I don't need because they are associated with the placeable version of the mod. Um, so to just copy this entire folder into the map, you will end up with a lot of different things that just aren't required like the store decals and things like that so I'm going to take the grass bale the grass square bale stack to start with I'm going to open that up in Giants Editor here and as you can see grass bale square bale stack there I'm going to take the name from here I've, I'll modify that slightly but uh, I'm just going to go file and then export all with files go back to my desktop create a new folder and I'm going to paste that in and I'm just going to get rid of the grass at the end there so it's square bale stack and then I'll open this up paste it in leave that as it is save and yes I want to keep the parent directory structure so now I can close that one down don't need to save that and I'm going to do the straw bale stack at the same time here so I'm going to open that one in giant Serta. as you can see square bale stack for straw, take the name from here, file, export all with files, put it in the same folder, save and yes, keep the parent directory structure, and I can close that one down as well. So now I have the appropriate parts for the grass and straw square bell stack all in one folder with the appropriate shaders and textures and only what is required for those particular stacks of straw and grass um, so if you're going to work with all of them then you know you can do the same thing and it will just create the new textures or add them in as required and then you'll have a nice folder for all your square bale stacks and then i would create a new folder called round bale stacks and then put all of the round bales into that folder and then you can put them into your map and have a nice structured folder set up and know exactly what is where and all the rest of it so um might be worth just opening these up or at least one of them anyway before you do the import make sure there's no errors in the console so you know that everything's been brought over that as actually is required but it uh, should be fine so i'll move that up out of the way for now if i go into the actual map itself i'm going to go into my maps folder and i'm just going to bring this folder into here like so so all my 3Ds and textures and everything else are in that folder. That's fine. And I think then what I'll do is I'm going to go into the map and actually import this into the map first of all. Then we can work with the scripts, the HUDs and everything else in a minute. So I have an area here. There was a sort of pole barn shed type of thing here. But I deleted that. I've made the area slightly larger to incorporate the two bell stacks that I want to put here. So again, this is up to you how you do this. I'm going to create a new transform group and I'm just going to name this bale stacks. 
um, and then I can incorporate all of the round bales, square bales, all into this one transform group. So file import, go into my square bale stack and import the grass bale stack first, I think. And we'll just cut that and then put it into that transform group. And we'll bring in the other one while we're here, why not? So we'll do the straw and again cut and then paste. Control X and Control V to cut and paste that into there like so. So if I click on the the grass one, Control B and click, and then I'll bring over the straw one. So highlight it, Control B and click. So what I want to do then is rotate these in the right way so that the triggers are facing outwards. So this one's going to be 90, which probably means this one's going to be 90 as well. Yep. And then I can position these where I want them to be. So a bit difficult to see the gizmo where it's positioned to move it, but to zoom in a little bit, you should be able to find it. So let's put that somewhere like that and somewhere like that I would say looks pretty good if I take all of these at once so highlight just click in whichever one you want translate XYZ left shift left control and C to copy all of those and then click in the straw one do the same left shift left control and V it will put it in the same place as the other one and then I can just drag it across like so. It just means that it's following, you know, if you want it to. Obviously, if you want it to look a little bit different, then, you know, work with that. You might want it to be slightly more forward than the other one or whatever else. Depends on the terrain and whatever else you're going to be working with, the area that you're going to be putting the bale stacks into. But uh, I want them to be somewhat uniform to each other. So I'm going to go with that. Okay, so right. Um, in this particular case, the icon and the clear areas i don't need any either of those that's to do with the hofberg and stuff so i don't want those in this particular setup um so i can delete both of those for this drawer as well one thing to note when you're working with um, a placeable mod that you're bringing into a map through giants editor some particular scripting scripting does not require um it to run the script from within itself it it's the script is run through the mod desk only but when you're doing a giant's editor to import into a map the actual mod itself needs to run the script with within the map as well as the mod desk itself because the mod desk is just running the script but it doesn't know what it's actually looking for in the map it's it doesn't know what part of the map is actually running that script so you have to tell it that the bales stack straw or grass is what the mod is actually running on um, so the way we do that is we create a new user attribute um, so click on the main transform group for either one of them add our new attribute down here and we need to go on create this must be with an uppercase c as you can see it there this must be a script callback so we'll add then here we need to go mod whoops mod on oh dear can't spell again mod on create dot and if you want to get it perfectly right if we actually go back to the mod itself go into the scripts folder we're using the storage house lure so you can take the name directly from there make a copy of that and paste that in so we've made a new user attribute called onCreate, which is a script callback. And then we've actually told it to create that mod on the the, the, the script on that mod by using the mod on create storage house text in there. So we can do that. Tab it, lock it in. I'm going to make a copy of that one because I'm going to do the same with this one. So again, we go on create script callback and then paste so we have mod on create dot storage house which is what the script is actually the script that this is going to be running on if you don't do that it won't work it won't matter what else you do um, correctly if you don't put that in it will not link it to the script and it just won't run 
Okay, so now that we've got all of that stuff into there, I'm going to go ahead and save the map, and then I'm going to work with the mod desk and um, moving over the script folder and everything else. Okay, so with the mods themselves imported successfully into the map, no errors in the console, made some changes to user attributes, we can have a look at the other parts that need to be brought over. So, have a HUD folder, scripts, shaders, and shared. There may be some parts in the shaders and the shared folder that aren't in the map build, so it might be worth just bringing them in and then copying over only what is required. So I'm going to bring them over and then just skip everything else so it doesn't overwrite something that might break the map. Um, I've kept the structure of the folders the same as the mod itself uh, because it limits the path file names I need to change and things like that. There's also in the storage house Lua script a path file name here pointing to the storage house GUI Lua. If you put the folders in any other place, so if I was to put this in my maps folder for example, then that path file name in that script would be incorrect and it would not find all the appropriate parts there. So do have to be a bit careful where you put your folders for your scripts and stuff like that in this particular scenario. If you do put it somewhere else, then you'll need to open up the script and change those path file names to match where everything is. But I'll just keep it, if you can, structured in the root folder the same as the mod itself. Okay, so next thing then, I'm going to open up the mod desk here for both of the mod and map, and then bring over the appropriate parts. So, uh, don't need the top one there because that's to do with the another script to do with the Hofbergman stuff, so don't need that. Input storage house menu is generic for all of the inputs, so I'm going to take that one and make a copy of that. I'm going to make a few spaces here. And we'll paste that one in. I will also take my L10M tag, like so. Paste that there. And then we need to just come down and choose the appropriate parts for whatever unit we're bringing in. So I'm working with square bale stack, grass, and straw. So if I go through these, I've got square bale stack, straw, for the station name there. So I'm going to make a copy of that one. And bring that into there. I've also got square bell stack grass so I'm going to bring that one in like so and then we come down to the UI again making sure you choose the appropriate one depending on whether it's round or square and then the field type itself so I've got square straw bale UI so I'm going to make a copy of that one and put that there and then I've got square grass bell UI so I'm going to make a copy of that one and put that one into there like so. Make a few more lines. The GUI stuff is all generic for all of the buildings, so we can copy all of that with the breaker as well, just so I know what it's all about. The store stuff we don't need to worry about. This is all to do with the placeable mods, so you can ignore all that stuff. So I'm just going to close it off with the end L10 end tag. Done, like so. Extra source files, I'm going to bring all of these over as they are and just delete the appropriate ones. So do like so. For whatever reason, in this particular scenario, this particular mod setup, there is an issue with the L10N short names or something like that. But there is this L10N fix Lua script, uh, which will fix that. If you don't include that script, you'll get errors in the display of the text for the appropriate buildings. So you need to have that script. The other two I don't need, so I'm going to get rid of both of those. And then I'm going to bring over the input bindings down here. The other stuff, store items, all the XMLs, don't need any of that stuff. Because again, that's to do with the placeable version. So I'm just going to paste that into there like so. Fantastic. So now that we've got all of that set up into there, go ahead and save the mod desk for the map itself can close that one down and then I'm going to remove the appropriate scripts that I don't need so I don't need those two at the top there all the others I need so we've got the L10N fix storage house storage house GUI and the actual XML that gives us all the appropriate parts for the HUDs and everything else 
where they're displayed on screen. So that should be pretty good, I think. Okay, so if you come into game and you get what I've got here, then that is a very good sign. Uh, we just have the grass and straw windrow on the ground here, the decoration, if you like. Uh, if you have a big stack of bales, then chances are there's not something working correctly, and you'll need to go back out and fix that. Um, if you have console extension um, installed, you can possibly, or should I say console commands activated, then you can potentially come in here and have a look through, see if there are any errors, otherwise read your log text and uh, see what errors pop up there, maybe something not quite in the right place. Um, but uh, yeah, what we have here is very good. If I bring up the F1 menu, come into the interactive trigger, we have the open bail menu with the R key. So I'll do that, square bail, HUD icon, 108 of grass bales and all the capacities and what we can outsource. So it will give us 16 bales in one go if we choose to, depending on how many we select to spawn back out again. So if I come into here, this is an auto load trailer, so I'll need to unload these in an appropriate way to hit the trigger. So theoretically, if I come into here, hopefully I'm in the trigger, uh, I'm going to press Y. Uh, I'm not sure where the trigger is. You might need to move the trigger, it just depends. Uh, so if I just move around a little bit, what I'll do is, let's uh, do that, and that, and then like that. There we go. So they are stacking up correctly there. <clears throat> so we have our first stack of bales go in and do whatever they need to do. So we come back into the trigger here. We can now see we've got 16 bales stored, the capacity per bale and the places and whatever else. So it doesn't allow us to change this because it's obviously just for straw, uh, but I can now select how many I want to spawn out. So if I just spawn six, click OK, we get six bales back out again. Fantastic. OK, I'm back. So I've uh, just mowed a small bit of grass here just to get me some bales. don't know why it doesn't come with these in the actual buy bales mod. But anyway, never mind. Um, so again, like with the straw ones, we just pull into the area here and uh, unload these into the trigger so let's do that and there we go we have our grass bells spawn into the appropriate places in the stack so grass bells and straw bells so if we bring up the menu again we have 12 bales with their individual capacity and all the rest of it and i can then just spawn them out like so wherever they come out there we go so we have our grass bells there and again, if I can get the trigger here, there we go. And we have our straw bales. So grass and straw bales stack mod in the map successfully. There are obviously many more in that particular pack. I'm Shell Wizard. Thank you very much for watching. And I will catch you on the next one.